very good evening everyone on behalf of iap india technical team i dr jaspreet welcome our today's speaker dr gaurav gupta sir and our today's moderator is dr kaushik malik sir and i welcome whole west bengal team before hand over to moderator i request all the participants please like and subscribe iap india youtube channel and facebook page over to you dr kaushik sir please moderate the session thank you ma'am i kaushik malik vice president iip west bengal good evening everyone and very warm welcome to our eighth webinar organized by iip west bengal branch and women's cell the topic of the day shoulder injury in sports by our respected speaker dr gaurav gupta sir i would like to congratulate of all us in a special location of iip is now re-entered in WCPT after a couple of years. I would like to thank Team IAP for the great for their continuous effort. Uh, President Sir, Dr. Sanjeev Jha Sir, Secretary Sir, Anna Malai, Dr. Anna Malai Sir, and Treasurer and Women's Cell Head, Dr. Ruchi Vasnai Ma'am, and their entire IAP CEC team. Let, uh, let me welcome to our organizer, uh, Secretary Arindam said, Arindam da, please say something. Warm welcome to the, all the participants and very warm welcome Dr. Gaurav Gupta sir. So you. you give uh, time to us to share your knowledge with us. I expected this webinar will be very helpful to the all the participants and I must thankful to the all the CEC and the IAP technical team for their continuous support to organize this type of webinar. Thank you, Arindamda. Now, uh, Dr. Risi Raj, uh, CEC is John. Dr. Risi Raj, please say something. Uh, good evening, everyone. I would like to thank uh, Gaurav Gupta, sir for conducting this uh, nice webinar for IAP State-Based State Bengal branch. And also I would like to thank uh, our IAP technical team. And uh, I would like, I hope today's topic is uh, very different from other uh, conditions because the shoulder is very important for every sportsman and also for some uh, uh, those who are uh, doing lots of activities or any uh, sports injury. So, uh, today's topic is very useful, sir. Uh, uh, thanks, special thanks to Gaurav Gupta, sir, for conducting this webinar. I hope everyone should enjoy this topic. So, thanks, sir. Thank you, Rishi. Now, I would, would like to call uh, Dr. Tanushree Bhattacharya, Women's Cell uh, IP West Bengal. Tanushree. Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Uh, on behalf of Women's Cell, I, Tanushri Bhattacharya, State Coordinator of Women West Bengal, is cordially inviting Dr. Gaurav Sir to host a very good topic on shoulder injury. And there are a lot of conditions that we see on day to day as patients. There are a lot of varieties of conditions are there. So it's a very helpful topic for all of us. So thank you and welcome all of you. Thank you, Dhanushri. Uh, now I call uh, so Dr. Somosil Maiti. Somosil, uh, please introduce uh, our uh, speaker. Somosil, please. Somosil, uh, unmute, un unmute yourselves. I welcome you all in the uh, eight webinar in a series by IP West Bengal branch. Uh, first, I want to thanks to the IP technical team uh, for their continuous support. And I am also showing my gratitude uh, towards Dr. Sonjeev Jhasher and our all our members and our fresh, young, most energetic, our own uh, Rishi, Rishi Raj, Dr. Rishi Raj. And uh, lastly, I cordially welcome the eminent personality of West Bengal in the field of ortho surgery, Dr. Gaurav Gupta, uh, who MBBS, DNB ortho, AMCH, uh, who serves our nation uh, last uh, 15 years as an orthopedic surgeon, 
and now presently attached with uh, Fortis and CMRI Hospital at uh, Kolkata. He specializes in uh, orthoscopic surgery, sports injuries, and joint replacements. Apart from his uh, hospital commitment, Dr. Gupta uh, uh, serves as a sports injuries consultant uh, to several elite players in cricket, football, golf, and hockey. Dr. Gupta has been associated as a consultant with uh, important tournaments like IPL, Merchants Cup, and uh, Tata Steel uh, Marathon. Dr. Gupta obtained MBBS from uh, Medical College Kanpur. He then uh, pursued DNB Ortho at Kolkata, where uh, he was a successful candidate from uh, Eastern India after a hiatus of uh, nine years. He completed five years international fellowship uh, over uh, four and a half years in between 2008 to 12, and those are arthroscopy and sports injuries uh, from current uh, institute from Sweden. That's a typical term uh, that I pronounce. This gives the Nobel Prize from uh, medicine each year, and this was uh, followed by Schiller and Upper Limb Fellowship at Geelong Hospital, Australia. And then joined replacement at Bharat, Australia. After that, uh, arthroscopy fellowship at world-renowned Royal Orthopedic Surgery Orthopedic Hospital, Birmingham. Also completed knee and hip uh, replacement fellowship fellowship at County Hospital UK. And just a minute, little more to say, Doctor. And Dr. Gupta is the scientific chairman of West Bengal Association of Sports Medicine and executive committee member of IMA Northwest. And he has professional membership in um, Indian Arthroscopic Society, Indian Orthopedic Association, Indian Shoulder Elbow Society of India, West Bengal Orthopedic Association, West Bengal Association of Sports Medicine. Kolkata Arthroscopy and Sports Surgery Society, MDA National Australia, and BAPIO UK. And and uh, he has a research and publication like Description of a New Cartilage Lesion in Shoulder at Geelong, Australia, Shoulder Triad Injury at Geelong, Australia, Knee Function After ACL Injury at uh, Karlinishka Institute at Stockholm. And Dr. Gupta, sir, up to you. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, please, you can start uh, today's, today's session. Thank you very much. That was very kind of you to invite me here today. And uh, we'll try and talk something about shoulder injuries in sports. So I think I should start my screen share. Yeah, can you see my screen now? Okay, Koshik, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, sir. visible. Okay. okay, right. So, uh, am I audible properly as well? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So, we'll talk about shoulder injuries in sports today. And, uh, you know, these are the various kind of overhead sports and other sports that people play which could lead to shoulder injuries. The first question that comes to your mind is why are shoulder injuries so common in sport? Typically, if you look at a throwing shoulder, there is something called throwing mechanics. And throwing mechanics involves discrete phases. And it is this phase of cocking, okay, when the shoulder is in maximum external rotation position. That is where the athlete generates maximum power while throwing, okay? And that is where most injuries do take place. Now, a throwing shoulder undergoes adaptive changes. What are these changes? Lengthening on the anterior side and a tightening on the posterior side to reach that position of external rotation and to generate power. This leads to increased external rotation and a decreased internal rotation along with an increased humeral retroversion. So whenever you examine elite athletes, for example, Koshik must be dealing with uh, a lot of these pace ballers while his engagement with CAB. 
So if you if you look at those space borders, you will realize that these are typical changes that they have undergone, and these typical adaptive changes also lead to various injuries and injury patterns. We'll have a look at that. So as a result of this posterior capsular tightness, the uh, the humeral head tends to migrate upwards posterior superiorly, and that leads to internal impingement and rotator cuff tears. Problems like those. Okay. Apart from that, there is increased external rotation, which leads to stress on biceps anchor, leading to a superior labral tear or a slack tear, as it is called. Right. Going to common injuries and their treatment. I'll just let you have a look at this short video and see what you think. video what exactly happened was somebody pulled the shoulder out okay and that is i mean that's not fair play but then these type of accidents do happen now these people once the shoulder is pulled out they have a chance of having a recurrent dislocation in 60 to 90 percent of cases and see how the fear factor works so this gentleman if you take his shoulder up in uh, in abduction and external rotation position, that's called the Aber position. That is where they feel that the ball is going to come out because about 97% of shoulder dislocations are anterior in nature. This is a classic patient of an anterior shoulder dislocation and they tend to become recurrent in young active people in a percentage of 60 to 90%. That's very high and that leads to significant disability as well as long-term damage to shoulder. And this is a typical picture of a shoulder dislocation. If you see this x-ray, obviously the ball is out of the socket. And what do we do in a surgery for recurrent dislocation, which is very much needed in young? We put in these stitches, these anchors, and this is the picture of a glenoid labra and the capsule. So we repair the labrum and capsule back onto uh, its original place. That's what we do here. And this is what they get. असुविधा <laughs> So if you look at this, so these are the two portals. This is an arthroscopic procedure or a microsurgery procedure with which all the repairs can be done inside the shoulder. And these are the two portals. And there is one portal at the back. So total three portals through which we can enter the shoulder joint and do the repair. Sorry. I will take the laser pointer off. And they get full range of movements and typically can return back to sport. That's the most important aspect. Other injuries can also cause shoulder dislocations. Uh, this gentleman is very active in a gym. I am Orko Roy. Uh, on 1st August of 2015, I, I got electrocuted and injured my, injured my right shoulder. After that, when I, whenever I tried to work, work out after taking a bit of rest, I went back to gym and whenever I used to work out, I felt that my shoulder is coming up. Um, so on July 2016, I had an arthroscopic surgery with Dr. Gaurav Gupta and now I'm back to gym and work out. It's quite, it's quite normal. All this. So even something like an electrocution or a fall, can also cause these injuries which are typically described as sporting injuries of the shoulder. And once you do the repair, the same person can go back to all full level of activities. 
within a few months time so they typically require this arthroscopic surgery and followed by the surgery there is a rehab program that we follow for about 6 to 9 months following which they can go back to normal level of activities so next in line is the rotator cuff tear what are these these are common in overhead athletes and as you can see on this picture there are four rotator cuff tendons it is the supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and the subscapularis in front so when these are broken from here they become like this that is where you start getting problem these are common in overhead athletes it could be a result of a sudden injury like a blunt impact on the shoulder or repetitive overloading of the shoulder they typically present with pain and difficulty in lifting the arm frequently misdiagnosed as a frozen shoulder the diagnosis is done actually by an mri scan because on the x rays you will see everything to be normal just a shoulder instability is also typically diagnosed on mri scans the labral tears so uh, same thing the rotator cuff tears also can be diagnosed on mri scans coming on to the treatment for a small tear which is less than 50% of the thickness of the rotator cuff we put the patients on a rehab program which is for the therapist to do and when there is a more significant size tear which is not responding to conservative treatment or a larger than 50% thickness with which is keeping the patient symptomatic we take them up for surgery so how do we do that let's have a look at a okay, so mr chatterjee what was the problem with your shoulder well uh, this occurred uh, when i went on to play uh, play cricket for my office team and i got myself injured here and uh, the injury was so severe that i was not able to bowl any further so it happened during a practice of uh, fielding practice only uh, and uh, sorry right so mr chatterjee before the pre ops days it was so severe that i was not even able to lift my hand any further like this or even turn like this so it was very severe thank you so he had a fairly severe injury while playing cricket for his office team and what did we do we just repaired the rotator cuff so uh, this is the camera that you put on the monitor you can see everything and these are the suture anchors through which these are the sutures the threads and this is the rotator cuff which we are repairing in this picture okay this video will take very long but when you tie the knots they go inside and sit right there and i can pull the knots from here and the stitches are done inside onto the rotator cuff that's how the repair process is done now it is 6 months since your surgery mr chatterjee so how is your shoulder now uh, the surgery was on uh, august Uh, as of now i would say that i am nearly 95% okay uh, i can uh, i can turn my hands it's pain free i can sleep with this side on uh, it's absolutely uh, i am doing my normal jobs i am in my office i i do my jobs and he is back to sporting activity in about 6 7 months time with a rotator cuff repair for a smaller injury for a minor tear we just put them on rehab and these rehab programs as you would know being rehab specialist the therapist these are typically done with therabands and uh, when you do external and internal rotation you actually activate all four of the rotator cuff muscles so repeated external and internal rotation will lead to a good rehab of the rotator cuff but then again beyond the rotator cuff you you'll probably uh, rehab the whole of the shoulder including the deltoid including the scapular stabilizers and establishing a good control over the shoulder that's the aim now just a quick uh, i will go through how to diagnose and treat frozen shoulder because as we said before a lot of these uh, rotator cuff tears are misdiagnosed as frozen shoulder people think this is a frozen shoulder when it is not so just a quick point on what exactly is frozen shoulder how to diagnose so clinically a frozen shoulder leads to global loss of rom range of motion typically external rotation is very much restricted and that is that is the classic picture of a frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis as it is called loss of internal rotation also happens with posterior capsular contracture the x rays will be normal here and on the mri scan we see a thickened joint capsule thickened synovium and a small volume or a reduced joint volume this is a typical patient of a 
of a frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis again the pain in the shoulder and difficulty in lifting the arm is common with the rotator cuff but you see how much the external rotation is restricted he is barely able to bring it from internal rotation to neutral and has got no external rotation at all this gentleman had a frozen shoulder for about couple of years he underwent a whole lot of conservative treatment like giving nsaids going through rehab getting steroid injections hydrodilatation and it was not working for him so these patients when these treatments do not work uh, what is best is to give them an arthroscopic release you do a keyhole surgery or with a small camera that you just saw and in the release surgery we just cut through the capsule and make the shoulder free and this is what they get at the end so somebody who had been suffering for a long time has now got full external rotation as a result of an arthroscopic release but in typically in frozen shoulders as we all know uh, surgery is reserved for recalcitrant cases who do not respond to conservative treatment unlike the rotator cuff which obviously will need repairs moving on to another common uh, shoulder injury in sport which is a slap tear i see a lot of these in overhead athletes what happens if you look at this picture this is the socket or the glenoid the humeral head top of the glenoid is uh, where the biceps tendon starts and comes down and this is the glenoid labrum so biceps tendon starts as an extension of the glenoid superior labrum and this is where the slap injury occurs superior labrum anterior to posterior tear which means it's torn from here to there in variable extent in different patients and uh, how we clinically test is this obrien's test is very good so you typically put the arm in a bit of forward flexion adduction and internal rotation and press down on the arm while the patient tries to lift it up and that is what gives you uh, a pain and then uh, if you change from internal rotation to external rotation and point the thumb upwards and repeat the test that gives you no pain okay so this is a detachment of superior labrum throwing athlete or a sudden pull is what we see most commonly and it presents with a lot of pain and discomfort and sometimes the symptoms can be really vague they can say that in throwing a ball i get again okay okay so this young lad came to us saying that whenever he tries to throw in this overhead position he cannot generate enough power and he gets pain and that uh, that literally uh, puts my you know uh, index of suspicion on a slap tear what else can happen this gentleman has represented our country in uh, in uh, in the national volleyball team and just hear his complaint and you can sense what a slap tear is and how a slap tear uh uh creates it jhore bol ye jabon pesar di to jabon lag ki bhabe jabon pesar di chi to bol bol er upor jabon pesar ta mari jabon lag so his role in volleyball is is a he is a smasher so he stands at the nets and smashes the ball and he is not able to generate enough pressure he is not able to put put his force when uh, uh, when he is smashing the ball that's his main complaint and what do we find uh in imaging we obviously need an mri scan but for diagnosing slap a plain mri may not work so it is better to get an mr arthrogram as it put a dye inside the shoulder and then do an mri scan and this is the glenoid in the picture and on top of the glenoid this is where the slap the superior labrum antero posterior tear has happened and the dye has leaked as a result we have diagnosed this now and this is the picture that we saw this is the these are the arthroscopic pictures of the gentleman that you just saw the volleyball player so we did a slap repair and majority of these returned to pre injury performance so this is his biceps tendon and this is his superior labrum you can see all these uh, you know all these changes of a tear so what do we do we trim this so that all these overhanging parts are gone and then we put in two stitches as you can see in this second picture one stitch here one stitch here and then this whole the whole uh, superior labrum tends to sit down on the glenoid this is the glenoid and this is the humeral head okay 
and then what happens following this? Six months later, this is where we are. He is able to generate that pace back in his volleyball smash. Let's look at another common sporting injury, which is acromioclavicular joint disruption. So typically happens when you fall on the tip of the shoulder and you've got different grades of acromioclavicular joint disruption. Type one is just a sprain. Type two, there is some lifting or some elevation of the clavicle above the level of the acromion. Type three, there is more. Type four is at the back. Type five is very high up. It goes more than 100%, more than the actual uh, dimension uh, of the acromion. And type six is when it goes below the level of the acromion. Typically, we do not see a lot of these type four and type sixes. We see type one, two, three, and five. They are more common. Treatment wise, type one and two, there is no controversy. It's non-operative. Type three is controversial. In young athletes, we recommend surgery. Young high demand shoulders, we recommend surgery. And in slightly older individuals, we can get away without doing an operation, just with rehab. Type 4, 5, and 6 are a definite surgical candidate. That's what the consensus is as of today. So this is this X-ray shows you a type 5 shoulder dis, uh, acromioclavicular joint disruption. And this is a clinical picture. You can see that the lateral end of the clavicle is literally sticking out above. It has gone through the trapezius and it is just sitting under the skin. So what do we do? We do an AC joint stabilization surgery. There are multiple procedures. In the acute stage, we fix the AC joint. And in the chronic stage, when it is more than two, three weeks old, we do an AC joint fixation. Along with it, we put in a graft like a semitendinosus tendon to reconstruct the ligaments as well. So this is an acute phase. Uh, this is uh, an arthroscopic procedure. This can also be done open, but we prefer to do it keyhole. And uh, with a keyhole, you, uh, you see inside with a camera with the arthroscope and then you are putting one button above on the clavicle, one button below the coracoid and tightening these, these threads or tapes nowadays we get. And this is how it works. There is a button above, button below. This is a slightly older presentation. At that time, we were using these sutures. Nowadays, we are using tapes in between, which are a bit stronger. And when you tighten these up, then the, uh, the collarbone of the clavicle comes down and the shoulder reduces, uh, the acromioclavicular joint rather, reduces back. And you can see the same patient just after surgery. And <clears throat> these are the two buttons and this is where the tight rope has gone <clears throat> in between the buttons. A few months later, you just see those little scars from the keyhole and he's back to full function. So just to summarize, common shoulder injuries in sports could be shoulder dislocation, which typically is caused by a Bankart's lesion, along with sometimes a Hilsax lesion as well. Uh, other common injuries are rotator cuff tears, which need to be differentiated from frozen shoulders, as we have spoken about. The superior labral injuries like the slap tears, the acromioclavicular joint disruptions. Frequently, the only symptom of these injuries would be pain. And they can be misdiagnosed as a frozen shoulder. Diagnosis is clinical and also get MRI scans because they are very helpful in these situations. Confirm by arthroscopy if there is a doubt. But typically by a clinical impression as well as MRI, we achieve the diagnosis and go ahead with treatment. Rehab is there for minor injuries and for significant injuries, we do arthroscopic repairs. Very rarely in some cases, open repairs may also be required. So any questions we'll be happy to take. Thank you so much. I'll probably stop my screen share now. You can read more on, on our website, which is www.jointclinic.in. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are waiting for the question, sir. Yeah, any questions anybody would want to know?
till now no question is there uh, i'm waiting for the questions so somebody has just asked i i will probably take take uh, questions from the chat box yes yes what is the, the probability in order patient older patient to rotator cuff tear so that's a very good question uh typically what tends to happen in slightly higher age groups is that there is a zone of low vascularity low blood supply that uh, uh that is present close to the insertion of the rotator cuff tendons and it is at these areas of low blood supply that the rotator cuff becomes weak and hence can tear off so you can have traumatic tears because of injuries or you can also have degenerative tears simply because of aging very commonly uh, tears that come to us tears that come to us are a result of acute or chronic so there is chronic weakness of the rotator cuff because of the zone of low vascularity and then one sudden impact say maybe hitting the bathroom door at home with a shoulder you know like a blunt impact here and that leads to the rotator cuff tear so in older patient the chances are higher than in younger patients right next question is uh... how we differentiate clavicle fracture and ac joint fracture i think in clinically i see clinical okay i think the question is how do we differentiate between clavicle fracture and ac joint disruption or ac joint dislocation right yes 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 that's the question so clavicle fracture as you see it is a breaking of the uh, of the clavicle or a, or the collar bone so it can be mid shaft or it can be slightly out laterally or it can be medial whereas ac joint disruption you will typically see the clavicle going up can you see my screen so uh, i'm just uh, showing up with my finger on my own shoulder is it yes, we can see okay so typically in ac joint disruption you will see the outer end of the clavicle going up whereas in a fracture it could be break from anywhere to the, from here to there okay but then if you have a extremely lateral end of clavicle fracture versus ac joint disruption the difference could be only a few millimeters and hence hard to discern so better to get x rays and they will show you whether there is a fracture or not or whether the clavicle has gone up or not any care to be taken while yes. playing help reduce or protect rotator cuff injury or any other injury very good question care to be taken in overhead sport right yes sir what uh, or rather uh, what can an overhead athlete do to prevent injuries so overhead athlete just like any other athlete needs certain things like uh, as we all know good nutrition good conditioning okay good nutrition good conditioning and good proper technique technique is very important i have seen quite a few of tennis badminton players who end up with injuries because their racket holding technique is not proper also you will see similar issues with people who are involved in throwing sport like uh, again cricket uh, pace bowlers sometimes spinners as well but we see a lot of pace bowlers with these and it is very commonly an issue with their bowling action which has actually led to these injuries so good training good conditioning and having a proper bowling action proper racket holding technique will go a very long way in preventing injuries uh next question is sir uh, is possible is it possible to perform surgery in osteoporotic section yes why not we do perform a lot of surgery in osteoporotic patients and i will share a bit of personal experience uh i see quite a few women you know middle aged women with rotator cuff tears and post uh, post uh, menopausal middle aged women with rotator cuff tears sometimes we do see a lot of osteoporosis in those shoulders but 
all that we need to do is to slightly uh, modify or you know adapt our surgical technique to an osteoporotic humeral head and once we are able to do that then uh, it turns out very nice uh, very recently i think it was it was 10 15 days ago that uh, i had a middle aged lady with a rotator cuff tear which i was repairing arthroscopic same thing that i do usually and the anchors that we put inside the humeral head would not have a very good hold because of uh, the osteoporosis and the weakened weakened humeral head bone so in those thing in those conditions we slightly change the technique change the direction of the anchor change the depth of the anchor insertion and get the hold or spread the load over multiple anchors so those are surgical uh, uh, surgical technique related points if we stick to those then yes you can do a good surgery in osteoporotic patients so next question is after how many incident in recurrent shoulder dislocation we need surgery that again is a very burning question in today's world uh i will tell you what when i was doing my orthopedic training i was taught some kind of an algorithm algorithm like you have to have two dislocations six dislocations in these many months there's a weird algorithm that was taught now we know that this algorithm has no value so when do we do a surgery there the, there is no controversy when a patient has two dislocations or more okay so if a patient has two three four five dislocations then you definitely need to take the patient for surgery because with every successive dislocation the chance of another dislocation keeps going up because the soft tissue and the bony restraints of the shoulder keep getting damaged more and more with every successive uh, shoulder dislocation right so you do not want successive dislocation so anybody with two dislocations or more undergoes surgery the controversy today is for the first time dislocator whether to do a surgery on the first time dislocator or not what we have developed as a consensus is if the patient is young and high demand then first time dislocation also warrant surgery but if these criteria are not met say i am a 43 year old orthopedic surgeon if i have a first time dislocation probably you should not do a surgery on me but with a second time dislocation do a surgery on me on the other hand koshik is dealing with 19 year old throwing athletes who are you know involved in pace bowling after a first time dislocation i would recommend surgery for them i think that that should answer the question yes sir next question is uh, if an individual is below 20 years so role of uh, corticosteroid in pain management and physiology of the corticosteroid okay now coming to corticosteroid injections now corticosteroid injections of the shoulder are used but very frequently abused also so corticosteroid injections what we follow now is they should not be given blindly as in anybody just coming to you with a shoulder pain oh pain ho raha hai chalo let's put a corticosteroid shot that is probably not the right way to approach the patient as on today people have done it in the past it used to be common practice anybody with shoulder pain used to get a corticosteroid shot but we now know that if somebody has a rotator cuff tear for example okay then if you and the patient comes to you with just a pain nothing else if you inject a corticosteroid in this shoulder the steroid leads to uh, leads to the tear getting worse the tendon quality getting worse and thereby you are causing more harm than good to the patient which obviously is not right so my indications for putting a corticosteroid injection in a shoulder are when i have in, uh, investigated by x ray and also mri scan and made sure that there is nothing damaged inside which can further worsen by a corticosteroid only in those cases i will put a steroid and typically those are adhesive capsulitis patients in whom 
no other pathology has been found so nothing is broken nothing is damaged i just need to get relief from pain and swelling i will put a steroid yes sir sir next question is uh, what are the more more common type of shoulder dislocation in paralytic patient uh, because the patient don't say about the pain and any kind of discomfort yes i have seen some of these now patients who who have hemiplegia i think that is the kind of patient that is being referred to over here right patients who have a hemiplegia or a hemiparesis those are the patients who will have a uh, who will have very weakened musculature of the shoulder so the rotator cuff and the deltoid uh, is very wasted in these and hence the muscular restraints to the shoulder are very low they are very easy to dislocate these patients okay these patients are very easy to dislocate now uh, what are the common types of shoulder dislocation so these patients how do they dislocate just a little bit of pull on the shoulder can lead to dislocation in these and very typically in these are elderly patients in whom the rotator cuff tends to tear when the shoulder dislocates out in younger patients remember when the shoulder dislocates it is an injury of the labrum and the glenohumeral ligaments whereas in older patients it is the rotator cuff that tears and the ball slips out of the socket so these are common in paralysis patients and yes you are right sometimes a patient doesn't say anything about the pain or discomfort and dislocation and i have seen patients who have who have had a shoulder dislocation one month two months ago and then they come to us with a two month old shoulder dislocation because they are paralytic they could not figure it out so but they definitely need treatment for that dislocation no doubts about it so next question are there are any chances of re injury of rotator cuff even after rehab and if yes what are the precaution of sports person needed to take care while resuming back to sports so yes there are always chances of re injury to rotator cuff and what i tell these uh, you know the sporting population or the young population of patients what i always tell them is that any force that has broken your acl ligament in the knee or the rotator cuff in the shoulder or the glenohumeral ligament in the shoulder any force any injury that has broken it once the same degree of force if applied again will be able to break it again right because whatever treatment whatever we have you do as a therapist or whatever surgery i do as a surgeon to repair a rotator cuff i cannot make it better than what god made it so with the same kind of injury you will have a re injury I, i mean with the same level of force you will have the same kind of injury even after a repair or even after rehab what precaution a person needs to take while resuming back to sport i think we spoke about it so you need to undergo a proper rehab if you have had a surgery to repair it then a proper surgery followed by a proper rehab if it's a non surgical case then obviously a proper rehab and then a uh, patient education typically in athletes is very important you need to teach them how to prevent injuries and if you go to the through the rule book of any sport and you follow those rules then they itself ensure that uh, you have a much lesser incidence of injury the surfaces have to be proper the kit the protective gear the technique and uh, you know in racket sports i have seen a lot of patients whose uh, racket holding technique and force application techniques are not proper ball throwing actions are not proper those are the areas where we need to educate them a lot and make sure that they stay free from injury another tendency with athletes is once they get injured to maintain their uh, position in the team they tend to hide their injury and nothing could be more harmful than this whenever there is an injury they need to come out with the injury seek treatment and get proper treatment never allow them to play through pain because a lot of them will say that yes i can play let me play so 
uh, our job as as a sports surgeon or as a sports therapist for the physiotherapist job is to not let them play through pain make them take rest get a diagnosis get a treatment plan and then resume them back to sport i think if we follow these few steps we need to, we can get them back to sport and avoid re injuries thank you sir no more question is there uh, indranil ghosh please unmute yourself subendu janna please unmute yourself indranil yes sir indranil uh, you can say you share your um, experience or share your some words very good evening sir very good evening good to see you after as <laughs> yes sir yes sir as usual sir always a dynamic session sir <laughs> thank you and thank you sir i mean uh, and uh, i would definitely like to thank our iap platform to give us a uh, constant process of learning relearning uh, re uh, re always so this kind of webinars definitely help us and if a speaker like gorov sir is there then obviously we don't need to sit still tell anything he is really a mind blowing one and his session was also good today so thank you for giving us this information today thank you thank you so much sir thank you thank you now uh, orinam orinam said uh, our state secretary please say something thank you sir for your such a nice and informative yeah. session uh, it's a really informative lots of things are been recaptured and relearned from you thank you very much sir for your kind cooperation with us and give a time to share your knowledge with us thank you very much i am giving a thanks to the kaushik malli also that uh, is conducting the uh, eighth webinar and each time he take the pain and doing all those things thank you koshik for your effort thanks thank you thank you arunanda and now i would like to uh, ask uh, dr subendu janna our joint secretary subendu janna please say something again good afternoon to everyone good evening uh, good <laughs> good evening to everyone also uh, at first i would like to thank cordially to dr gorav gupta sir for this informative session uh then i would like to thank all the cc of central ip dr jha sir dr annamalai sir dr bhasni ma'am uh, then i would like to thank ip technical team for supporting us every time then i would also like to thank dr kosi mulik for organizing that type of seminar that type of webinar every time then would, i would like to thank ip west bengal women cell uh, for being with us i would like to thank all the participant uh, who enjoyed this session very well and making their knowledge great thank you good night also thank you subendu uh, thank you garu gupta sir uh, jasprit ma'am up to you thank you dr gaurav gupta sir for organizing for such a wonderful session session was very informative and thank you west bengal team for organizing such uh, wonderful webinars dr kaushik malik sir dr arindam seth sir dr suvendu sir dr indranil sir dr rishi ras sir dr sanjeev sarkar sir and uh, women cell uh, coordinator dr tanushree bhattacharya ma'am thank you for or uh, organizing this webinar i extended my thanks to dr sanjeev jha sir iap president and dr ruchi vashne iap treasurer for uh, giving us this platform and again i request to all the participants please like and subscribe iap india youtube channel and facebook page thank you everyone and good